Okay, here's an example of the work energy theorem. So we have during a storm, a crate of crepe is sliding across a slick, oily parking lot through a displacement D of negative three meters I hat. Um, while a steady wind pushes against the crate with a force F of two newtons I hat plus a negative six newtons J hat. So our force is two newtons I hat plus a negative six newtons J hat. Um, I put the figure on the side and then A, it says how much work does this force do on the crate during the displacement? And B, if the crate has a kinetic energy of 10 joules at the beginning of displacement D, what is the kinetic energy at the end of D? Now, because they gave us both the displacement and the force in unit vector notation, we can use that uh, dot product method to solve for our work done. So remember, when we have dot product, um, that's the work is equal to force dot D. Um, and of course, these two are vectors, but that work, remember, is not a vector. So what we do here is we just are going to um, multiply our I hats together, our J hats together, our K hats together. Now here we can see that we only have a displacement in the X direction, so our I hat direction. So all we do here is multiply these two things together. So we get um, negative three multiplied by two is a negative six joules for our I hat. Now, we have a force in the j-hat direction, but because our distance or displacement is only in the i-hat direction, the x direction, that force is actually doing no work on this object. So our only work being done is this negative 6 j-hat. Now, if we did have a y component of displacement, we would multiply the j-hat times j-hat displacement times force, and then we would add those things together. Remember, when we have a dot product, we add these together. You don't combine these things using something like Pythagorean theorem because work is not a vector, okay? You would add them together. But this is our, uh, this is our answer for letter A. How much work does this force do on the crate during the displacement? So there is our answer for letter A, just negative six joules. And then for letter B, it says if the crate has a kinetic energy of 10 joules at the beginning of displacement D, what is the kinetic energy at the end of D? Now we know that work is equal to the change in energy. In this case, it's a change in kinetic energy. So I know change in kinetic energy, that's kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. So I'm solving for kinetic energy final here. So I get work plus kinetic energy initial, plugging in my numbers, the work done on the object was negative six joules, plus my initial kinetic energy, which was 10 joules. So that means my final kinetic energy is four joules of energy.